So we're standing really in the shadow of the border wall at uh, Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument, um, one of my favorite places in the world, um, up on Monument Hill, feet away from the Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument wilderness. The borderlands are the most biodiverse region in the country. Um, this landscape is literally abounding with life. Um, we're standing in a national monument right now that is protected because it has um, some extremely rare species of cactus, um, of trees that aren't found anywhere else in the United States. We recently received word from uh, the Department of Homeland Security that they will be replacing this existing 15-foot high wall with a solid steel bollard 30-foot high border wall. They'll also be replacing vehicle barriers, which currently allow for the migration of wildlife um, with a massive solid steel impassable barrier that will really have devastating impacts on the ecosystem here. The President's administration has incredible authority to circumvent any and all environmental laws when building border walls or roads in these areas. Um, and this is all because of a law passed in 2005 called the Real ID Act. There's a little provision tucked into that law that gives the Secretary of Homeland Security unparalleled authority to cast aside, to literally waive any law on the books in order to rush construction of walls like this one. All of these walls stop the migrations of wildlife all of them essentially cut ecosystems in half, um, and all of them have very adverse impacts on the environment. What we have on the border is a beautiful Sonoran desert that is one of the world's wettest deserts, meaning it's green, especially right now it's springtime and we had a, a wet winter and there's flowers everywhere and all sorts of wildlife. I can understand when people say, oh, the border's just a bunch of sand and the heat, and it, that's not the case. So this area in particular is amazing, beautiful. You have one of the most biodiverse areas in the world because you have everything from Gila monsters at the low-lying Sonoran Desert to black bears that live up at the top of these peaks that can be 10,000 feet or taller in elevation. In the 1990s, border walls were constructed in Nogales, and when George W. Bush became president, more border walls were extended out into some of the wild areas. And so those walls I go right up to the Santa Cruz River, and then they stop, and there's vehicle barriers in that quarter mile wide or so floodplain of the Santa Cruz, and then there's more walls. So what that means is that at that point where those vehicle barriers are, that's the only place where many wildlife species are going to be able to cross the border in that particular region. Larger species like the jaguar, uh, the ocelot, these are a couple of endangered spotted cats that we have in Arizona. Species that are not endangered, more everyday species like deer, javelina, black bear, these are some of the, the larger animals that cross the border all the time. And in that area, they're only going to be able to cross where the vehicle barriers are because they can duck under or jump over. And where those border walls exist, no chance for, for wildlife to move. And we don't know if some of those species, like the jaguar and the ocelot, are going to be impacted by this project because they're not complying with the Endangered Species Act. According to the Center for Biological Diversity, if you have a magical 2,000 mile wall that stops everything, you've got 93 species that might be wiped out of the United States, if not the face of the Earth. 
in addition to wildlife moving through there, that's where the water moves. We're here in Tucson, but we're still in the Santa Cruz River Valley. So that Santa Cruz River is the really the source of life for this whole region, whether we're talking about wildlife, whether we're talking about today's modern cities, or whether we're talking about the indigenous people and the settlements that were already here, because these are traditional autumn lands where we are now. So people, wildlife, everything depends on the water here in the Sonoran Desert. And the Santa Cruz River is the most reliable source of water in the region. And yet here we are building walls right across these waterways. We don't know if the water is being polluted because they're not complying with the Clean Water Act. And do you really want to wall yourself off from the river? Water is life. That's the lifeblood of the whole region. Luciano, the hummingbirds are putting on a show. The National Butterfly Center is a 100-acre demonstration garden, basically. It was a commercial onion field that we have returned to native habitat, and our purpose is to show people that if you plant it, they will come. This area has the greatest diversity of butterfly species of anywhere in North America. There are about 700 butterfly species in North America, about 350 of them, almost half, can be found in this four county region. And each butterfly species is intimately connected to one or two plant species. That's why we're here, because that plant diversity supports the butterfly diversity. We found out about the plans to build the border wall here on July 20th, 2017, more than nine months before any congressional vote or appropriation for border wall funding. I went over the levy on our property on a Thursday and found five government contractors cutting down our trees, mowing down our brush, widening our private road, and I asked, who are you and what are you doing here? And they said, uh, the government sent us to start clearing this land for the border wall. They're starting in our section of the lower Rio Grande Valley Wildlife Conservation Corridor because the former Rio Grande Valley Sector Chief of Border Patrol informed me that this was their path of least resistance. They had the fewest private property owners in this area which would expedite the construction process because they didn't have to mess around with private property seizure to the extent that they will have to in other areas. For every mile of border wall they are constructing, they are pouring concrete over about 20 acres of land. And we literally produce birds, bees, butterflies, all of that in inches and acres the same way that a farmer produces cabbage. So if we have to take 20 acres out of production, that's a big hit. A lot of folks don't realize this. In the Rio Grande Valley in Texas, both in the 2018 and 2019 budgets, Congress reached a so-called compromise to fund almost 100 miles of border wall. This part of Texas is the most Hispanic part of the entire state. You know, it's such a shame that these are the counties that are being walled off from the river, these places that have been underserved um, and underrepresented for, for generations. That wall money was sent there because those places don't have the political capital to fight back. Um, in, the nature in those areas is absolutely stunning. Some of the last habitat for wildlife that remains is all along the river there. And of course the river is the border.
so a wall being built through some of those areas will bulldoze some of the last remaining wildlife habitat for and all sorts of incredible subtropical species that only exist in that part of the country. We have to address the root causes. Why are people crossing the border? We have a very outdated, unrealistic immigration system and people just aren't allowed in the front door because we have basically racist policies on our southern border that don't let people of color into the United States. And we need to look at the other root causes. Why are people suffering so much in Central America and Southern Mexico and trying to come here? What can we do in terms of supporting their economies, helping have sustainable development programs in those countries that allow people to practice the right not to migrate. Those are the only ways to actually address the issue in the Department of Homeland Security. Clearly no ground truthing was done for any of this, but that's what happens when we just think in terms of stereotypes and negative prejudice about the borderlands. But we have some bad hombres here and we're gonna get them out. People here live the hatred that Trump spreads. If you live in Tubac or Nogales and you wanna go shopping an hour from your house and you get racially profiled at a checkpoint and a drug sniffing dog checks out your car. Trump is also forcing asylum seekers to stay in Mexico or to stay in these improvised cages underneath bridges, which is totally illegal and totally a violation of their human rights. And so what he's really trying to do is self-sabotage, create a crisis on the border that gives him an excuse to do all of the anti-immigrant white supremacist policies that he wants to get passed the reason he wants to get those passed is because the people who are in charge of his immigration programs are the same people from these white supremacist groups that groups like mine have been fighting for many years. These are the worst of the worst elements of our society, and unfortunately they're in charge right now. And so that's why we all have a responsibility to fight back. The border wall does little, if anything, to stop people from crossing into the country. Um, one thing it does do sometimes is push traffic into more desolate wilderness areas. Dozens, if not hundreds of people perish here in this very desert every year as a result of our border policies. We have pushed these people into the most remote reaches of wilderness and literally used the desert as a weapon to try and deter them from crossing. Our border policy right now functions on death and disappearance of migrants. We've turned one of the most beautiful national monuments in the American Southwest really into a killing field where people disappear. Border Patrol activity runs rampant across this entire national monument. There is no accountability, no environmental review done when border walls like these are constructed. And in so many ways, the environment and the endangered species here um, are paying the price of our terrible, terrible border policy. The amount of ignorance that we've encountered is astounding. And it is, I believe, uh, you know, the result of the dumbing down of America, the rejection of science, the rejection of climate change, the disappearance of healthy habitat, of healthy wildlife species, the extinction of species, the pollution of our waters. There's no other place like this in the country. We're on the banks of the Rio Grande River for a reason. We're going to have our land seized. We're gonna have access to our only source of fresh water eliminated. The pumps that bring us water from the river are going to be behind the border wall, guarded by a paramilitary police force. Who wants to come and chase butterflies in what looks like a prison yard in the shadow of the steel bollards? 
we're an ecotourism destination as much as everything else. And people have a choice where they want to go in pursuit of birds and butterflies and, and nature and wildlife. It may be a death sentence for us too.